Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about the domain of a vector-valued function. So let's begin with the definition, and then we'll do an example. The domain of r of t with component functions f of t, g of t, h of t, is the set of real numbers t, such that f of t, g of t, and h of t are defined. And I'd like to remind you that the domain is really the set of legal inputs or allowable inputs or input values. And when I say allowable, I mean f of t has to be defined and g of t has to be defined and h of t has to be defined. We can't have things like division by zero or the square root of a negative number, things like that. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. In this example, we have r of t with three component functions. The first is the square root of 4 minus t squared. Second component is e to the negative 3t. And the third component is the natural log of t plus 1. So to figure out the domain of the vector valued functions, we need to work on each component. So first of all, let's find the domain of our first component, I'm going to call that f of t. So find the domain of f of t, which is the square root of 4 minus t squared. Now remember, if we're working with real numbers, we can only take the square root of non-negative numbers. In other words, this radicand must be greater than or equal to 0. Must be, let's write that down must be greater than or equal to zero, right? Must be non-negative. All right, so let's work on that. So what we need is we need 4 minus t squared to be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, if we factor this, we need 2 minus t times a 2 plus t to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, if you remember your work from pre-calculus, or maybe Calc 1, to figure out the set of values that solve this quadratic inequality, we need to make a, a sign chart. So down here, I'm going to write t, and then I'm going to write a 2 minus t, and a 2 plus t, and then we'll figure out when is the product of these factors greater than or equal to 0. But it's kind of hard to just figure it out off the top of your head. And sometimes when students do that, they get the wrong answer. So I really do encourage you to write a sign chart here. OK, so when is t going to be actually equal to 0? Well, that happens when t is 2 and t is negative 2. OK, so let's look at our first factor, 2 minus t. That's going to be 0 when t equals and then if t is some bigger number, like maybe a test value of 3 or something like that, it's going to be negative. And for all these values down here, like 0 and negative 2 and stuff, that's going to be positive. And then we have another factor, which is t 2 plus t. That's going to be 0 when t equals negative 2. It's going to be positive for all of these numbers greater than negative 2, and it's going to be negative for any number that's less than negative 2. And so now if we multiply these together, a positive times a negative is negative. 0 times anything is 0. In between, we get positive 0, and then anything above 2 is negative. So what we desire, we desire the set of t values such that the radicand is greater than or equal to 0. So it looks like we're interested in this closed interval from negative 2 to 2. Right, because that's where we get the 0 and we get the positive. This looks really good. That's what we needed for our problem. So let's summarize this and let's write down the domain for f of t, which is a square root of 4 minus t squared. It is the closed interval from negative 2 to 2 because we can take the square root of 0, so that was actually fine. Okay, so now let's move on to our next component. The next component was e to the negative 3t. 
Okay, so now let's find the domain for g of t equals e to the negative 3t. Now remember these exponential functions are normally exponential growth if you've got a positive it's going up, it's, it's growing, but if it's a, got a negative exponent we're decreasing so we've got a maybe an exponential decay but the point is here is that the domain is all real numbers okay so that one was pretty easy now the last piece here natural log of t plus one let's analyze that so now let's look for the domain for h of t, I'm going to call that last function h of t, and that's natural log of t plus 1. Now if you remember in general uh, the graph of natural log like y equals ln of x, that graph looks something like the following. In other words, um, it, the function is defined for all positive values of x but it can't be zero. We can't take natural log of zero, nor can we take natural log of a negative number. So what we need in this problem, what we need for this problem, is we need this argument, this, this piece inside the parentheses, needs to be, needs to be strictly greater than zero. All right, so let's just write that down. So we need, what do we need? It's always good to write down what you need. What we need is t plus 1 is greater than 0, strictly greater than 0. And that is a linear inequality, which can be solved by bringing the 1 over to the other side. t is greater than negative 1. So our domain for h of t is, well, open circle or parenthesis negative one all the way up through infinity. Okay. okay, so now let's put all of it together. So putting it all together, what do we have? Well, we found that the domain for our first function here, this piece had a domain negative two to two. The next piece we were working on was e to the negative 3t, and this had domain negative infinity to infinity. And for the last function, our last component, this had domain negative 1 to infinity. And the domain for r of t is the set of real numbers t, so the set of t that satisfy the domain for each component. So I'll just say for f of t, g of t, and h of t. Okay, and so if you're comfortable working with set theory, this is really the intersection, right? We're going to look for the intersection. We're looking for the set of t values that live in this set and this set and this set. So the intersection of the closed interval negative 2 to 2, infinity to negative, negative infinity to infinity, intersect with negative 1 to infinity, this will be, so the domain of R of t will be negative infinity all the way up through closed bracket Okay, and if you wanted to kind of see that on a number line, you could certainly sketch this out. Our negative 2 to 2, that was right here. So close circles on the endpoints. And then the next thing we had was uh, negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so that's everybody. That's all real numbers. It's not very exciting in terms of doing an intersection. And then the last set we were worried about was this negative 1 to infinity. And so let's see, negative 1 would lie somewhere in between here. So let's put that right there. It's an open circle on the negative 1, and we're going all the way up to positive infinity. So the set of points which are common through all three of these sets, well, it starts at negative 1 on the left-hand side and goes all the way up through a positive 2 
closed on the positive 2. Okay, so that's a set of t values that satisfies all three. So you have to live in all three sets, and the only intersection is right there.